Nothing gives you testimonies in this world like the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing gives you victory in this world like knowing how to engage the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing gives you deliverance like understanding the way to apply or engage the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing gives you confidence and the journey of life like knowing how to engage the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing gives you a mental shift that we are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. We've been translated to the kingdom of his dear son, like knowing what the blood accomplished for us on the cross. I welcome you again to blood at midnight. It's been about three days or four days that we've been having blood at midnight in our WhatsApp group where we join well over 17,000 people from different walks of life to pray. And, and that break was intentional just to let people know that, yeah, there, are so, there is something happening on the WhatsApp group that will not stop us also not to be part of it. But at the same time, we should be part of the one that we're doing and also in YouTube. But at the end of it all, we should also be part of the one going on in our WhatsApp platform. So we allowed us to pause for a little while so that everybody will migrate to the ones that we're doing on our WhatsApp group. Welcome again to Blood of Midnight here on Facebook and on YouTube. Lift up your voice and begin to shout the blood of Jesus Christ seven powerful times. Lift up your voice, understanding what the blood has the capacity to do. Understanding and accomplish understanding what the blood can do understanding what the blood has the power to do lift up your voice and let's begin to shout it again the blood of jesus christ shout it again the second time the blood of jesus christ scream it aloud the third time the blood of jesus christ lift up your voice and shout it the fourth time again the blood of jesus christ shout it in a thunderous manner the fifth time the blood of jesus christ scream it aloud the sixth time the blood of jesus christ shout it the seventh time the blood of jesus christ I like us to look at a very important scripture, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. And let's begin to praise God from that scripture. Through the everlasting blood of your covenant will I bring you out of the pit wherein there is no water. He said, As for you also, because of the blood, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. As for you also, as for you that is in Kenya, as for you that is in South Africa, as for you that is in Caribbean, as for you that is in any regions of Asia, it's true. The blood of the everlasting covenant, I will bring you out of the pit. I will bring you out of the pit of barrenness. I will bring you out of the pit of addiction. I will bring you out of the pit of sin. I will bring you out of the pit of disappointment. I will bring you out of the pit of stagnation. Come on. I will bring you out of the pit of retrogression. I will bring you out of the pit of frustration. I will bring you out of the pit of sicknesses and diseases. As for you, because of the blood, I will bring you out of the pit. Can you open your mouth and let's begin to thank God that you are out of that pit by the blood. Can you lift up your voice and begin to praise him again tonight and say, Lord, thank you for I am out of that pit by the blood. Can, can you type it now? Can you type it right now? I am out of the pit by the blood. You know the pit that life and circumstances has pushed you into. The essence of blood at midnight is to activate the fulfillment of prophecy. The essence of blood at midnight is to activate fulfillment of prophecy. The essence of blood at midnight also is to enforce fulfillment of scriptures. The essence of blood at midnight is also to enforce fulfillment of scriptures. The essence of blood at midnight is to enforce victory by the blood of Jesus. The essence of blood at midnight is to activate better things by the blood. So many things happen when we engage the blood. 
So I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to praise God that you are out of the pit. Begin to celebrate God that you are out of the pit. Begin to tell him thank you that I am out of the pit. Bible speaking in the book of Job, he said, deliver him from going down the pit. I have found a ransom. Deliver him from going down the pit. That's in Job chapter 33. Deliver him from verse 20. Deliver him from going down the pit. I have found a ransom. I'd like you to begin to thank God that the ransom of the blood has been found over my life. I can't go down the pit of lack. I can't go down the pit of poverty. I can't go down into the pit of untimely death. I can't go down into the pit of penury. He said, then he is gracious to him. Job 33 verse 24. Now, if you take it up from verse 22, if you take it up from verse 22, you will understand what I'm saying. He said, yes, his soul draws near the pit. His life draws near the pit. His finances was going near the pit. His health was going near the pit. His marital destiny, her marital destiny was going near the pit. And his life was also going to the executioners. Verse 23. Verse 23, he was going near the pit. And his life was going near the executioners. You will not get there. He said, if there is a messenger for him, a mediator, one among a thousand, to show man his uprightness. If there is a messenger for him, a messenger of what? A messenger of redemption. A messenger of emancipation. A messenger of exodus. A messenger of deliverance. A messenger of vindication. A messenger of change of story. If there is... A messenger! A mediator! Mediator by word, mediator through the blood. Wow! Among a thousand. To show man his uprightness. I want to use the blood to show you how upright, how righteous, how the blood can connect you. And it says in verse 24. And when the uprightness is showed, it says, Then God is gracious to him. And God says, Deliver him from going down the pits. I have found the ransom. I'd like you to begin to declare tonight that the ransom of the blood has been found. I can't go down the pits. Type it now and begin to pray it. The ransom of the blood has been found. I cannot go down the pits. I don't think you're praying that prayer if you understand it. The ransom of the blood has been found. I can't go down the pit of failure. I can't go down into the pit of shame. I can't go down into the pit of marital spell. The ransom of the blood has been found. I cannot go down the pit. I can't enter into the pit of delay in conception or what we call barrenness. The ransom of the blood has been found. I cannot go down into the pit of lack. I can't go down. The ransom of the blood has been found. Can you pray that prayer for yourself? Can you begin to declare it as I declare it over your life? The ransom of the blood has been found. None of your family members will go down into the pits of untimely death. The ransom of the blood has been found. You can't keep spending your life and the life of your loved ones being spent in hospital. The ransom of the blood has been found. You can't continue begging to eat. The ransom of the blood has been found. You can't go down the pit. I speak forth over your life. The ransom of the blood. Can you pray it? Yes, I have found the ransom of the blood. Therefore, we cannot go down the pit. Yes, nobody will go down the pit by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. The ransom of the blood has been found. That divorce will not hold. Yes, the ransom of the blood has been found. That disfavor will not continue. I declare right now, I plead the blood as a covering over your life. And it begin to speak help and favor. It begin to speak supernatural help and favor. It begin to speak 
supernatural help and favor. The ransom of the blood has been found. Hosea chapter 13 verse 14 said I will ransom them from death. Hosea chapter 13 verse 14 I will ransom them from the power of the pit or the power of the grave. I will bring them out. I will bring something as a ransom in an exchange and once that thing is given they will come out. I want to teach you briefly on how that thing is being done when the ransom was given, the ransom of the blood was given, we were translated, we were pulled out, we experienced change of story, we experienced healings, we experienced prosperity, we experienced forgiveness of sins, we experienced for, for revival, we experienced vitalization, revival and vitality and strength because the ransom has been found. So, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. One. Ransom one. I will redeem them from death. I will ransom and I will redeem. We're going to pray a prayer in a moment. He says, O death, I will be your plagues. I will be your punishment. O poverty. O sickness. O devastation. O frustration. I will be your punishment. I will be your plague. I will destroy you. O oh, grave, I will be your destruction. Pity is hidden from my eyes. We are going to make a declaration tonight that I am ransomed and I am redeemed. You mentioned that thing you are ransomed from. By the blood of Jesus Christ or through the blood of Jesus Christ, I am ransomed and I am redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, having become a cause for us. Because it is written, cause is anyone that hangs on a tree so that the blessings of Abraham might rest upon us. Declare it by the blood. I am ransomed. By the blood I am redeemed. By the blood I am ransomed. By the blood I am redeemed. By the blood I am ransomed from sickness. A grip of sickness and diseases. I've been ransomed from grips of sickness and diseases. I've been ransomed from the grip of sickness and diseases. I've been ransomed from the grip of lack of testimonies. I have been ransomed from the grip of lack of testimonies. I've been ransomed from the grip of stagnation and frustration. Come on, are you praying? I have been ransomed and redeemed from every contrary experience. Can you pray? I've been ransomed and redeemed from addiction, addiction, addiction to homosexuality, addiction to masturbation, addiction to drunkenness, addiction to lesbianism, addiction, addiction to alcoholism, addiction to lion tongue, addiction to evil, addiction to borrowing, addiction to begging. I have been ransomed and redeemed by the blood. Type it now. Type those two words. I have been ransomed and redeemed by the blood. Type it now. I have been ransomed and redeemed by the blood. Type it boldly and pray it again. I have been ransomed and redeemed by the blood. Now, the opening chapter, the opening verse of Hosea chapter 13, verse 14, 14 says, I will ransom them from the power of grave. I will ransom them. Hosea chapter 13, verse 14. How did he do that? I will ransom them from the power of the grave. That means grave has power. Genesis chapter 37 verse 29. Reuben went to the pit or a grave pit and he realized that Joseph was not in the pit. <laughs> they will come looking for you where you used to be. They won't find you there. I say it again. 
by the power that is in the blood, they will come looking for you where you used to be. They will not find you there. Then Reuben returned to the pit. And indeed, Joseph was not in the pit. Put your name there. I will not be found in the pit of lack. Put your name there. I will not be found in the pit of sickness and diseases. I shall not be found. Type it, type it. Type it. I shall not be found in the pit of begging. I shall not be found in the pit of tenancy. I shall not be found in the pit of lack. I shall not be found in the pit of ignorance. I shall not be found in the pit of ignorance. I shall not be found in the pit of ignorance. Listen, if you have not read my book, Blood Redefined, or 40 Days Journey with the Blood, go and get it. It's free. As a matter of fact, as you join our WhatsApp community tonight, we'll be sharing that book again tonight. We'll be sharing that book again tonight so that everyone will lay hold on that book. Everyone will lay hold on that book. I would like you to begin to pray that everywhere life has pushed me into, men will come back to see me there. I shall not be found there. Can you pray it for yourself? I shall not be found there. Reuben returned to the pit and Joseph was not in the pit. Reuben returned to the pit. They will come back. They will come back. Bible speaking, it says, the ransom of the Lord will return to Zion with everlasting joy upon their head. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 10. Everything constituting sorrow in a sighing, sorrow in a mourning, sorrow in a crying, they are being pursued. They shall flee away. The ransom, can you see that? The ransom of the Lord through his blood shall return. Because I am ransom, I shall return to church. I shall return to Zion. I shall return to that fellowship. I shall return to that community. I will return with singing. Begin to declare it. I will return with singing. You are not praying. You are not praying. You don't understand the enormity of that prayer. They redeem the ransom of the Lord. I am ransom. I am redeemed. I shall return. I shall return. I shall return where they used to know me. I shall return where I used to worship. I shall return to my community. I shall return to my state. I shall return to my country. I shall return. With everlasting joy, I shall return with singing. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Activating testimonies by the blood. Activating testimonies by the blood. The blood is an instrument of ransoming you from evil. The blood is an instrument for ransoming, for redeeming. And then it, it, it does not redeem and keep you where it has redeemed you. It redeems and keep you where you are meant to be. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. When the blood ransom or redeems it catapults you to where you are meant to be. So we're going to find out how do you activate testimonies? How do you activate testimonies? How do you activate testimonies? So the blood ransom or redeem from evil. The blood ransom or redeem from sin. The blood ransom or redeem from sickness and diseases. Let me say it again. The blood ransom or redeem from poverty. So if it ransom you from poverty, will it leave you there? No, you can't be neutral. The blood will translate you once it redeem. It translates you to wealth. If it redeems you from sin, the blood translates you to righteousness. Please follow me very well. I'm sure somebody is getting something right now because there's a translation power. There's a redeeming power. There is a testimony power that is being activated by the blood. So when the blood redeems from sin, it translates you to righteousness. It's not enough to bring you out. It is more than enough to take you where you are meant to be. It's not good for the blood to bring them out of Egypt without translating them to Canaan. 
it is not good for the blood to bring them out of Egypt. So the blood redeems, the blood translates. The blood redeems. I would like you to type it now. Can you begin to share it to everyone that is, you know, you want them to be part of this meeting tonight? Can you begin to share it? Please, I beg you to begin to share it. So the blood redeems, the blood translates. The blood redeems, the blood translates. So how do you activate testimony? By knowledge, by knowing that as the blood is redeeming you, you pray for the redemption by the blood. You also pray through the blood for translation. Amen. Somebody's getting something now. You don't pray for the blood to redeem you from the pit. You keep quiet. If he redeems you from the pit of depth, from the pit of untimely death, from the pit of stagnation, from the pit of sickness and diseases, from the pit of addiction and sin. If the blood redeems, you also pray for the blood to translate you to righteousness. For the blood to translate you to wealth and prosperity. So when the blood redeemed them from Egypt, the same blood translate them to Canaan. So let me show you in Colossians chapter 1. Verse 13 and 14. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 13 and 14. Can, can I? He said, He has delivered us. Another word for delivered us means He has redeemed us. Can I get it in King James Version? He has delivered us. He said, Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. So can you see that? Now, through Jesus and his blood, he delivered us from anything you can think of. Whatever that is the issue of your life, he delivered you from it and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14. How? 14. Verse 14. In that kingdom of his dear son, or in that his son, we have redemption we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin he has translated us somebody that is ready to be translated into a land of testimonies take up your communion material now Someone that is ready to be translated, take up your communion materials. Someone that is ready for this translation, take up your communion material. Somebody that is ready to be translated, carry your communion material. Why? We are about to activate testimonies, unusual testimonies. Take up your communion material quickly, quickly. Everyone, take up your communion material quickly, quickly, quickly. Everybody, take up your communion material. We are about to activate testimonies by the blood. As you take up your communion material, let us all look at Isaiah 35, verse 10. Isaiah 35, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 35, it says... And the ransom of the Lord shall return. Shout it aloud, I shall return. <laughs> say it aloud, I shall return. Say it, say it, I shall return. Return where? You shall return and come to Zion, to church. You shall return and come to this platform. You shall return and come to fellowship with songs and everlasting joy upon your head. You shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Lift up your voice and begin to declare it. I am the ransom of the Lord and I have been translated into a place of signs and wonders. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. I am the ransom of the Lord and I have been translated by the blood into a place of signs and wonders. Lift up your voice and begin to pray it now. I am the ransom of the Lord and I've been translated into a place of signs and wonders by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, by the same blood that redeemed me, by the same blood that ransomed me, I, I declare, I activate, let that same blood 
activate testimonies. Let me show you something so that you can pray very well. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Let me show you something so that you can pray very well. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Let me show you something so that you can pray very well. Christ has ransomed us or Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a cause for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree 14 cause is anyone that hangeth on a tree so that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith he has redeemed us from the causes of the law and he translated us translated us to Abrahamic blessing you are going to pray by this blood I am ransomed I am redeemed I am translated Joseph was redeemed from the pit Joseph was translated into the palace I am redeemed from sickness can you pray that prayer I am translated to sound health by the blood Testimonies are activated tonight uh, for everyone to understand the enormity of this prayer. Testimonies are activated. I am redeemed from lack. I am translated to abundance. I speak over your life. You are redeemed from sickness and diseases. You have been translated into sound health and vitality. Kapaluda, by the blood. Can you pray for yourself? Inkluput and sandia katalibra hanamukapota. I activate it tonight. Testimonies abound. They were redeemed from Israel, Egypt. They were translated to Canaan. They were redeemed in spite of the obstacles and opposition, including Red Sea and Jordan. God, not minding those things, He translated them to Canaan. Tonight, you are redeemed from lack. You have been translated into abundance. You are redeemed from poverty. You have been translated into prosperity. You are redeemed from sin. You have been translated into righteousness. You are redeemed from untimely death. You have been translated into long life. You are redeemed from addiction. You have been translated into righteousness. You are redeemed from marital spell. You have been translated into marital please. You are redeemed from barrenness. You have been translated into a joyful mother. You are redeemed from marital spell. You have been translated into having your life partner pray Woo! you are joking if you are not praying you are joking if you are not praying you are joking if you are not praying open your mouth and declare it I lift up the communal material tonight as an instrument of translation an instrument of activating testimonies I lift it up towards seven and I declare it becomes the instrument of translation. It becomes also the instrument of activating, activation of testimonies. I activate testimonies now. I activate testimonies now. I activate. Can you begin to pray it? I declare enforcement of activation. You're joining us on YouTube. You're joining us on WhatsApp. You're joining us on Facebook. Anywhere you're joining us, please share, 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 share. Tonight, even in our WhatsApp platform, is a special night. You can't afford to miss it by 11 o'clock. Remember what I told us, that every night when we gather here, it is 10 p.m. for now, till the 29th day of the month of March. But it's going to be 11 p.m. after the 29th day of the month of March. Now, I, I, I want to pray for everyone in this, our platform. I speak over your life. I speak over your life. In this month of March, anything can happen. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 message translation I speak over your life in this month of March anything can happen I declare we are not limiting ourselves to anything Jesus said if there are no ifs among believers anything can happen God told us from Isaiah 61 verse 7 it says, for your shame, you will have double honor in New King James Version. For your shame, you will have double honor. I speak forth over your life now. Isaiah 61 verse 7. Instead of your shame, no one will suffer any form of shame. 
Nobody under the sound of my voice will suffer any kind of shame. Nobody under the sound of my voice will suffer any kind of shame. For you are shame because we have activated testimonies by the blood. I declare, let there be double honor. Drink the communion. Eat the flesh. Tonight, I declare the testimonies, they are activated. I activate every kind of testimonies. Begin to harvest it from now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Remember, by 11 p.m., we'll share the link here. Connect with us on our WhatsApp platform where we have well over 17,000 people joining us from all over the globe. And it's been from one level of grace, one level of glory, one level of wonders, one level of signs, one level of testimonies to another. So you can't afford to miss it. And I want to encourage you, please, every first day of the month, if you have not given your offering on this platform, if you have not given your offering, let me share something with us about the offering of the month. Numbers chapter 10, verse 10. Numbers chapter 10, verse 10. Let me share it with us so that you understand it. Whether you are joining us on our YouTube platform, you are joining us on our Facebook platform, you need to understand it. It says, also in the day of your gladness, whenever we enter the first day of the month, you hear things like happy new month, happy new month. Everybody is excited. In your appointed feasts and at the beginning of your months, underline that word, at the beginning of your months. So, Month is 12 months. At the beginning of every month, first day of January, first, second, first day of February, first day of March, first day of April, first day of May, first day of June, first day of July, first day of August, first day of September, October, first day of November and December, at the beginning of the months, you shall blow the trumpet over your burnt offerings. Burnt offerings connote sacrifices, offerings, special offerings. And over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, don't give God monthly offerings casually. It's intentional. And it says, those offerings shall become or shall be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord, your God. Cornelius gave and gave and gave. God told Cornelius in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 10, verse 1. Acts of Apostles, chapter 10, verse 1. God told Cornelius. He said there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, verse 2. It says this man, verse 2, talking about Cornelius, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. What happened to him in verse 3? About the ninth hour, the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, this is what happened, verse 4. Cornelius, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? So he said to him, You are prayers, one, and your arms, your giving, have come up for a memorial before God. There is a way you give, it builds a memorial. If you listen to the rest of the story, if you read the rest of the story, Cornelius, because of his giving, Gentiles were not meant to hear the gospel and be saved. God sent people to Peter. God asked Peter to bring message of salvation to Cornelius. And while Peter was struggling to talk, just about to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon all those that had. Listen, when your offering built a memorial, God said, it will build a memorial. You're giving to me first. It will build a memorial. And then I will remember, I will, I, will, I will do things that you cannot I will bring helpers that you cannot bring. I will attract things into your life that cannot attract. Lift up your offerings, everyone. 
Lift it up towards God. If you're doing a transfer, write it on a piece of paper and leave that piece of paper towards God. This is the third month. It's our month of double. I declare over all your offerings, it will become a sweet smelling savour and it will become a memorial for you this month. And because of that, testimony will abound. Signs and wonders will abound. Help like never before will abound. Cast your offering, transfer it to the details uh, that is showing on your screen. And the Lord bless you. Please remember, on the 29th day of March, being Easter Friday, the 40 days journey with the blood will elapse, and that's the grand finale. And it's titled, No Longer Possible. It's a night where we're going to be engaging the blood. Life, I will be here to sprinkle the blood like Moses sprinkled on the, Egypt, on the Israelites. I will be here to sprinkle upon anybody. I didn't say the ministers. I will sprinkle it. As God is nudging in my heart, I will sprinkle upon everyone. Um, Exodus chapter 24, verse 6 and verse 8. Moses took half of the blood, poured it into a basin, sprinkled it upon the people. Exodus chapter 24, verse 6. So you can't miss it. We will sprinkle. Moses took half the blood and put it in a basin and half the blood. He sprinkled on the altar. Verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people. Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people. So you shall be sprinkled for what? For better things. The Bible speaking, it says this blood speaks better things. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. It speaks better things. So you shall be sprinkled upon on that 29th. So I'm telling you what will be happening that day because it's a night of different kinds of prayer. It's a night of different kinds of engagement of the blood. It's a night of activation of everything that has been possible. They shall no longer be possible, especially negative things. Number two, take note, it's a night of drinking the blood. It's a night that we will partake of the blood like never before. Why are we partaking for the transfusion of the life of Jesus into our blood? Thereby, whatever that is in his blood will be recipient in our blood. There are people praying in their homes that their faith is not active. But in this atmosphere on the 29th, faith will be activated and we will be here live. Number three, we shall be dipping our feet inside the blood for feet washing by the blood. So that everywhere the sole of your feet touches, you shall possess. And of course, after our feet has been dipped in the blood, number four, we will sprinkle the blood upon the testimonies we've written. I told us how to write testimonies. Don't say, God, give me car. No, share it like a testimony so that it will turn out to you for a testimony. So we sprinkle the blood on that thing, number four, and then the feet that is washed with the blood, we stand upon it. It can never stand upon us. Number five, we shall be washing our hands with the blood. The Bible is speaking, it says, uh, Pontius Pilate washed his hand in the water. He said, my hand is not involved in this thing. We shall wash off sickness. We shall wash off poverty. We shall wash off diseases. We shall engage that mystery of hand washing. Next, number five, we shall be engaged, we shall be engaging the mystery of face washing. A little of the blood that you are drinking, you put a little of it in your hand and use it to wash your face. What is it for? As people set their eyes on you, you are bearing upon your body the mark of our Lord Jesus Christ. No evil is permitted to happen to you. As you are coming, evil will clear the way and your life becomes a magnetic field for favor. Number six, we engage the blood in pleading. We engage it in pleading and engaging in different kinds of prayers. It promises to be an amazing time of different kinds of prayer. We engage it in prayer. And what else? Number seven. Listen, my dear friends. All these things, I've, I've mentioned six, right? All these things I'm saying and many more are things we'll be doing that night. That night, you get what is called something like a bottle of water when you are coming. Write the names of all your family members. The Bible speaking in the book of Joshua chapter 3, Rahab brought in all her family members, put a thread, scarlet thread, red, on her window. When the evil, when the men, rather Israelite, came into Jericho, they killed everybody. It's only the woman, her family, that was preserved. And they were preserved, and things started changing for them. Rahab the harlot preserved her family through the scarlet thread representing the blood. 
So please, number seven, everyone that comes with the names of your family members, you put it inside the communion. When it's time, we'll lift it up and we'll pray all manner of prayer. None of them shall see evil. They will escape evil and come into limelight of testimonies. I'm sure you'll be glad to be there. Can we project it again? 40 days journey with the blood. The last night is the night. It's no longer possible. So these seven things and many more we shall be doing that night. There will be prophetic um, declaration. There will be deep, deep God's word of revelation that will be coming to us. There will be different kinds of prayer. There will be ministration to activate high praise that will culminate into high raising and testimonies. I want to say a very big God bless you and I want to say please start preparing to be here live during the grand finale of Blood of Midnight. You are 10 weddings outside of your base. You are 10 burials outside of your base. You are 10 functions outside of your base. When it comes to attending something that will change your destiny, please prepare for it. I want to say a very big thank you for everyone that have been part of this and everyone that have been patient with us for the past three days just to ensure that people tune in to our WhatsApp platform. Here we are back and we continue doing what God has ordained us to do. I will see you tomorrow for another explosive night of encounter. Until then, keep winning by the blood. Enjoy the rest of the night. Bye.